all here today. Um, last week I shared a message and um, we're not in a series and so we don't have sermon notes and we're not in a particular theme but um, I just you know every once in a while instead of teaching you kind of like just to preach and kind of go with the flow and so last week we kind of went with the flow with a word and the word was that God wants us to recover some things. Turn to your neighbor and say it's time for me to get it back. <laughs> time for me to get it back. Amen. And we talked about how God wants us to recover our calling. God wants us to recover those things that we've put to the shelf, we've, we've forgotten, we said, oh, it's never going to happen, or I can never follow God, that's too hard. Anybody hear what I'm saying today? And then we talked about how God wants us to recover our, our, um, our what did we talk about? Anyway, uh, how God wants us to recover our faith, right? God wants, some folks have been filled with doubts and been filled with fears, and it's kind of those thorns that come up and kind of eat the word and eat the prophetic word in your life, and you're left with, you know, what are you left with? And, uh, and then God wants us to recover everything that's been stolen. So turn to your neighbor and say, we're in a new season. It's time to recover some things. Time to recover some things. Amen. And today I want us to look at, we're going to kind of build where I left off last week, and I uh, kind of like preaching this way because sometimes when we have sermon notes and we're doing themes and we have, uh, we have different things that we're trying to teach, I get a little locked into that. So turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to be free today. We can, just, we can just go with whatever the Lord wants to do and whatever the Lord wants to say. But this message is called, I Will Not Be Silent. I will not be silent. And just like last week, I felt like the Holy Spirit was impressing upon me that we've stepped into a new season with God. Even my prophetic friend, Doug Addison, I got to read it when I got back from vacation, and he came out with a word for August that this is a new season. This is a season where God wants to bless you and, and where there's inheritances and prosperity and some things financially that God wants to do. Everybody say, hello. Hello, God. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Right? And so I read his word and I thought, wow, God's been speaking to me about a new season too. But the Lord spoke to me about recovering some things. Amen? Because people have been going through a lot. And it's not over yet. We're, 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 we're moving forward, but there's some things that have been holding on. And today, it's kind of like part two, but I believe that God's given me a message for everyone that is here. You're not here by mistake. You're not here just by happenstance. But God has called you here because God does not want you. Everybody point at yourself. God does not want you to be silent. God does not want you to be silent. And so I hope this message makes sense to you. It made perfect sense to me when I put it together the other day. <laughs> when I prayed over it. It made perfect sense to me. But only God can speak to each one of our hearts. And I believe that God wants to shake us up so that we can recover. So I want to just start with where we left off last week. Just a couple reminders that God promises us that we will recover. And in the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 25, God said this, I will repay you. Everybody say repay. repay. I will repay you for what the locusts have, for the years that the locusts have eaten. That means that it, it's not just what happened to you last week. God goes back whenever you have suffered a loss. He goes back years. And he said, now it's payback time. Amen? You just have to step into God's season and begin to believe with him. So it can be your health. It can be a promotion that, that uh, the enemy screwed up for you. It can be a job. It can be finances. It can be a relationship that the enemy got in there and tore it open. And, and it can be uh, kids. It can be all kinds of things. But God wants you to believe that now is a time when God is saying, I want to repay you for the years. I want to repay you for the years. Why? You're going to have plenty. You're going to be full. And you will praise the name of the Lord. Amen? So God doesn't want you to be silent during this time. God wants you to be active. And, um, and, 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 and then you will never uh, experience that shame again. Amen? 
Now, last week we talked, we kind of ended the message with 1 Samuel uh, chapter 30, where David, he, 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 he literally recovers all that was stolen from him. How many of you want to see God do something in your life? You've suffered some losses, you've, you've had some pain, you've had some tears, you've, you've, you've maybe lost some things, maybe some things you let go of, maybe you let some doubts and fears cr come creeping in, and you've lost ground uh, with your faith, but God is saying, you know what, now's a new season. You can come in now with God and begin to see recovery for things that have been lost in your life. Other times, it's just the old devil. He's come and he's thrown everything in the kitchen sink at you. And you thought you, you made one thing and you, okay, I made it through that. And then you got another thing and then it hit with something else and then hit with something else. Until finally you just uh, got so bogged down you didn't know what was up and what was down. This message is for you today. Because God does not want you to be silent. Amen? And so I want to just start with 1 Samuel 30 because that's going to be my launching off. We're going to go with, with where we ended last week. So David and his men, they come back to this place called Ziklag. And when they get there, <clears throat> their wives and their children are gone. All their possessions are gone. And the most evil tribe of all. The Amalekites have come and wiped out everything and burned everything to the ground, took their wives, their kids, took everything and took off. And so here they are, and David and his army, these guys that have been going around uh, doing military exploits with him, right? His mighty men. What does it say that they did? It says, David and his men wept out loud until they had no strength left to weep. How many of you know that we're all going to go through those times in life, right? That's why we have the Bible. We can see the stories of the greats. David is one of the great shepherds, one of the great psalmists, one of the great kings, but here we see him at his lowest point, one of the lowest points of his life. You might be experiencing one of those low points in your life, or you might have just kind of come a little bit out of it, or you might be going to experience that in the future. Whatever it is, I encourage you, go ahead and cry. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's okay to weep. You can even weep out loud. Even grown men can weep. All right? And it's okay to weep, but do you just leave it there? But David didn't stop. What did he do? He turned to the Lord. He went to this priest, Abiathar, and he inquired of God. And he said, God, should I pursue my enemies? And the Lord spoke and said, yes, pursue. I'll give you success. And so what did he do? He, he pursued. He got his men, and they pursued the Amalekites. And you know what? God gave him success. And I want to read this scripture for you. It says in in 1 Samuel 30, verses 18 and 19, these wonderful words. And I believe that God wants this for my life. God wants this for your life. It doesn't matter what you've lost. It says, David recovered everything. Say everything. everything. David recovered everything that the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. And it says, nothing was missing. I could go on there, I could preach all day in 1 Samuel 30 because David didn't, didn't just get what was his, but he got the plunder from the Amalekites and then he started sending his friends all these gifts. And uh, I, I want you to be so blessed, I want you to recover all that you give me some gift cards to Supermax. I want you to recover all that you, you give Pastor some gift cards to the 555 Steakhouse. Amen? It, it, you see, God, God wants you to recover all and then get some booty as well. Get some plunder as well. I had to make sure you know what I'm talking about there. Get some <laughs> plunder as well. Amen? We're going to roll that tape back and roll it back. <laughs> God wants us to recover all and get plunder. Amen. So how did David do it? How did David do it? How do you do it? 
How, how in the world are you going to get back everything that, got, that the enemy stole from you, things that have been left behind, losses? How, how are you going to get that back? Well, what did David do? It says in, uh, earlier in the chapter, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, says, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. These are his own men. This is one of the lowest points of his life. He's, he's like hitting rock bottom. I think the only other rock bottom point for David was when his own son was, was trying to take over the kingdom and he had to flee Jerusalem. But this is one of the lowest points of his life. And it says each one was bitter in spirit. How many of you have ever been bitter? You've been bitter. You thought, wow, how could God allow this to happen in my life? How could, how could this happen, right? I, I'm, I'm a believer. I, 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 I've been walking with God. How in the world could this happen? David is like, he's bitter. His men are bitter. And then what happened? It says, but David, everybody say but. But, but David found his strength. And the Lord is God. Everybody say that out loud. But David found his strength and the Lord is God. Thank you so much. So how do you think David got his strength back? How do you think he was encouraged again? They didn't have a Bible like you and I have. Right? He, he, could, he could maybe go to the tabernacle and have, have somebody unroll scrolls of some of those of the Torah, but he didn't have a Bible like what you and I have. He didn't have an Old Testament, a New Testament. What did David do to encourage himself? The same thing he did on the hills of Judea while he was a shepherd boy. He sang to the Lord. He was not silent. He was distressed. He was bitter in spirit. But what did he do? He began to look up. And he began to sing to the Lord. He began to praise the Lord. He began to encourage himself in the Lord. I don't have a slide for this, but um, just to prove that I'm not making this up, okay? Because I believe that I believe that David he praised his way out of the pit. And I've been in pits before, I've been in low places before, and I know what it's like. You've got you've to get out of that pit, and God has given us a way to get out of that place. And when we begin to draw near to God, the Bible says that God draws near to us. How do you draw near to God? Well, you enter his gates with what? And you enter his courts with what? And it hasn't changed. Even in the New Testament, people are praising and worshiping. The church is called to praise and worship. Amen? Yes. And so God wants us to be like David and not be silent. But I want to just share a scripture with you. Psalm chapter 8, verse 2 in this psalm. It says, out of the mouths of babes and infants, you, O oh God, have ordained strength. Because of your enemies, that we may silence the enemy and the avenger. How many of you have had the enemy coming after you? you? You've had some issues going on in your family. You've had some issues going on with your health. You've had some issues going on financially. You've had your dreams put to the side. And, and here, God is saying to us that we can become strong in the Lord. We can come out of that place of distress and out of that bitter spirit. But we've got to do what David did. And here in the psalm, it says you can get strong if you will out of the mouth of babes, out of the mouth of infants, what? God has ordained strength so that we will silence the avenger and the enemy. How many of you want all those old tapes to just stop? All the old lies to just stop. Everything coming against you to just stop, right? Well, what silences the enemy is when you, God has ordained strength. And in the New Testament in Matthew 21, Jesus quotes Psalm 8, verse 2. And he says, 
He says, uh, let me get the quote right. He says, uh, and this is his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. People are praising him and shouting Hosanna and throwing down palm branches. And he says, from the lips of children and infants, you have, he didn't say, uh, he didn't say in the New Testament, it doesn't say you have ordained strength. He says in the New Testament, you have ordained praise. How are you going to get strong in your spirit? You've got to open up your mouth. You can't be silent. You see, the world, when, when they get bombarded, what do they do? They get lower. They get quieter. They get shut down, right? All through the pandemic, what did we say? We're going to walk on the waters of this storm, and we're going to get where we're going to go faster than anybody else. Amen? We're getting over on the other side. And so if you will be a person of praise and a person of faith and begin to trust in God, even in the midst of those things, God can get you out of those places that you find yourself. Amen? You say, well, Pastor Sandy, I didn't plan this. I didn't know this was going to happen. You know what? God is the Alpha and the Omega. But his principles still, still are true. Amen? So the enemy wants to shut you up, and God is saying, I don't want you to be silent. Amen? Now, this morning I want to I look at a scripture in Psalm 30. We're going to look at a, two or three psalms this morning. Is that okay? Yeah. Are you with me? Because I believe that this is a word for the house. This is a word for every person that is here today and every person that is online. God wants to get this word in, into our hearts. If we're going to recover some things in our lives, we're going to have to learn how to get strong in the Lord. And if you're going to get strong in the Lord, you've got to begin to praise. You've got to open up your mouth. You've got to begin to step out of that place by faith. Amen? And so God wants us to, to learn a few things. In Psalm chapter 30, I was reading it, and some things jumped out for me. First of all, verses 1 and 2 say, I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. How many of you love it when God rescues you? This is David. He's singing this psalm, and he says, God, I thank you that you rescued me. I can look back at my life, and I can count often when God has rescued me, like every time I come to a stop sign and I go through when I shouldn't go through, God has rescued me from causing accidents on the road, right? God has rescued me uh, from accidents. God has rescued me from uh, financial disaster. God has rescued me from different things, right? And then David goes on and says, you refuse to let my enemies triumph over me. Who's on your side? Right? When you're feeling all alone, when you're in distress, when you think, God, how could you allow this? You need to know that God's on your side. And he refuses to let your enemies triumph over you. And even if you're going through a valley, you don't have to stay in the valley. You can come out of the valley. You can come out of the pit. You can come out of distress. You can come out of darkness. You can come out of those places. And God, he doesn't want your enemies to triumph over you. You've got God, his word, and all of heaven backing you up. Amen? So I love this Psalm of David. And he goes on and he says, Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. In this psalm, if I read the whole psalm, you'd see that David says, man, I almost died. I mean, I came really close. I mean, some things happened in my life, God. But you, you won't let the enemy triumph over me. I'm going to praise you, God, because you won't allow the enemy to have his way with me. Because you're my God. I'm your daughter. I'm your, I'm your son. I'm yours. And I'm not just anybody, right? I, I'm yours, and I'm called by your name. And, and, and so, God, I know that you're, you're not going to let my enemies triumph over me at the end of the day. Amen? Amen. When the fat lady sings, it's going to be your triumphal story. Amen? There she goes again. She got out. She got out of that tough place. There she goes again. God must be on her side. Amen? And so 
God doesn't want your enemies to triumph over you. And then it goes on in verse 3 and 4. And David says, you brought me up out of the grave. You kept me from falling into the pit. Sing. And he says, God, God's people begin to sing. This is a psalm. This is a psalm for the church. It's a psalm that David wrote for the Israelites. Amen? And I, I, I want to jump down now to verses 11 and 12, the last two verses. We don't have time to go through every single verse. But I was reading this the other day, and you have turned my morning into dancing. That's what we were singing this morning with Joe and the new season, right? Yeah. God, you've turned some things around. It says, you've taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. And then it goes on and says, that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. That I might sing praises to you and not be silent. And when I got to this part, the Lord said, the enemy of your soul, the enemy that's come against your people has been trying to get your people to be quiet, to be shut down, to be oppressed, to never open their mouths, to forget that they used to praise God, to forget that they used to have a quiet time, to forget that they used to worship, uh, to forget all of these things. Because I'm going to, the enemy is just been, uh, you know, bombarding people. And so what happens when you're bombarded is you shut up. But God says, don't shut up. Open up your mouth and begin to praise because that's the reason. That's the reason why you know the Lord is he wants you to give him praise. Do you know that a lot of people think, well, God must have a big ego. You got all these psalms, 150 of these psalms. And it's all God saying, praise me. Let everybody that has breath praise the Lord. When you get to heaven, what are you going to do? You're going to praise the Lord. And some people think, Does God really need all that praise? Well, first of all, God's deserving yeah. of all the praise. And if you don't praise, Jesus said the rocks are going to cry out. If you're walking down the street and you hear, wow, 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 it's because the sidewalk's crying out. Amen? Because your mouth is shut. Because you're not praising God. Jesus said the rocks are going to cry out if you don't begin to cry out. Even creation will begin to cry out. Amen? But you're called to cry out. And a lot of people think, well, why does God need all of my praise? Well, first of all, he's deserving of all of your praise. He's worthy. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's a big God. He's the beginning and the end. He's the most high God. He's exalted to the highest place. He loves you. He created you. It's like breathing, praising. If you've got breath, everybody take a breath. Okay, you're alive. Now I want to hear a praise. If you've got breath, you need to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you. You see, if you're alive, you need to be praising God. Why is that? Does God really need our praise? Actually, it's for you. God's saying, you need to be praising me because there's some things that begin to happen like the enemy is silenced. How many of you are tired of hearing the enemy just going on and on and on? The enemy is silenced. You overcome your enemies if you begin to, even babies can do this according to Jesus. According to the Psalms, we're created. Babies and infants, as soon as they begin to cry out, it's a praise to the Lord. Some of you moms say, well, it didn't sound like a praise to me. <laughs> God has ordained strength. God has ordained praise, right? That's how you get strong, is when you begin to praise the Lord. So this morning, I want to go through a couple, a couple truths for us. 
And they're so simple. I mean, this church was founded on praise and worship. I know you know these scriptures inside out. I know, I, I know you can come up and teach this message too, but I'm trying to get a word into your spirit today. I'm trying to give you a word of the Lord that's going to help you get out of where you're at. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to get out. <laughs> time to get out. You've been hanging out there way too long. Amen? Where was I? Oh, yeah, here we are. So I want to I touch on two truths this morning. And the first one is this. Praise is a decision. What did David have to do? He had to make a decision that he was going to get out of that place of distress, that he was going to come in to the presence of God. And how is he going to do that? He's going he's to get strong. He's going to get encouraged by praising, beginning to thank God. Okay, God, I don't know why the Amalekites came. I don't know why my, my everything's burnt down. I don't understand the why, but I do know one thing. You're a great God. And so today I'm going to begin to worship you, and I'm going to thank you that I'm alive, and I believe that my kids are alive, and my wives are alive, and I'm going to get it all back because you said so. And so, God, I'm going to begin to praise you that you're bigger. I ask for your strength, and you just begin to praise the Lord and thank the Lord. Amen. And, and so the first thing is, is praise is a decision to not be silent. Because if you're not thanking God, then you're silent. And Psalm 30, verse 12 said that you may praise the Lord and not be silent. If you're not praising God, if you're not uh, entering into his presence, there's a silence around you. The rocks will cry out. Creation will cry out, but you're missing what you're here for. And it's going to help you in life. It's going to help you get out of distress. It's going to help you each and every day. And so we've got to make a decision, right? We've got to make a decision to, to not be silent. And how do we do that? We have to make a decision because, see, worship like today, Worship comes after we've corporately made a decision to praise God. Did you feel the spirit of worship when it entered in? Did you feel the glory of the Lord? Did you feel the presence of God? Some people come up to me and say, well, Pastor Sandy, the hair on the back of my head went up. You know, it's like, it like, I felt chills all over. You know, I got goosebumps today. It, it's the presence of the Lord. And see, Worship is not a decision because you praise. Praise is a choice. Praise is a decision. You've got to say, I'm going to make a choice right now. Whether it's good times, bad times, mountaintops, or the valley. I've got to make a choice to not be silent. I've got to make a choice to praise. And if you make that choice to praise, and then the spirit of worship will come in. And then you'll find yourself just loving God and thanking God because he's going to come bless you and minister to you like he did this morning. Marvin, what happened to Marvin? Well, he's a, he, he's a worshiper. He has a, a heart of David. And so we started praising God and, and something jumped inside of Marvin because Marvin praises God every day. You can tell the people that know how to praise God that make it a lifestyle because they get around a little bit of praise and they're like, oh no, we're going to go up 10 notches. Hello. I feel something jumping on the inside of me. I'm going to begin to shout and praise and this and that. And pretty soon the, the whole church is moving to a new level. Amen. Thank you very much, Marvin. We, we enjoy, we enjoy you doing that when you come here. So Beyond what you feel, beyond what your thought process is, you have to make a choice. David said in Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2, you all know this. I know I'm preaching the choir, but this is a word for you. It's not a word for your neighbor. It's a word for you. Okay? In Psalm 103, David said, praise the Lord, O my soul. All of my inmost being, my, my inner being, my core, my spirit, my, my mind, my emotions, my way, all of who I am. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord on my soul and forget not his benefits. So 
I want to just stop there for a minute. What is David doing here? David is telling his soul, his mind, his emotions, and his will. You're going to get going here. I'm not going to stay in this place. I'm going to come into God's presence. I know that God is bigger than my problems. I know that God is always good. And I don't feel it right now. I might be tired. I might be weary. I might be in distress. I might be in a valley. I might be on a mountaintop. I, you're going to have to be like David. You're going to have to tell yourself. So, Sandy, come on now. Let's get with the program. Let's begin to praise the Lord. Come on, soul. My emotions go, I don't feel like it today. Can't you see that I'm down in the dumps? Your mind goes, well, I don't know. I don't think I really need to praise all the time. I mean, if I, if I give God a, a praise at church, that ought to count. And your will says, I don't know. That's a lot of work. I might be on a praise diet. I might be fasting praise. So David said, so get with the program. Come on, mind. Come on, emotions. Come on, Will. We're going to praise with all of my inmost being. I'm going to praise the Lord. Why? I don't want to forget his benefits. You see, you've got a short memory. You forgot what God did for you yesterday. You forgot what he did last week. You forgot what he did a year ago. You forgot what he did in the church. You forgot what he did with your finances. You forgot this miracle. You forgot how he helped you to avoid this. You forgot this. You forgot how he helped you with the health issue. How he, he got you into the doctor's office. How he, he, he did this and he did that. You forgot because it's a day and you don't feel like it. Or your mind saying no. Or your will saying I'm too tired. And guess what? If you will begin to worship and praise the Lord, you're going to begin to remember the benefits. Amen? Goes on and says, David says, um, who forgives all your sins? Did you, did you remember, did everybody here today remember who, who's forgiven your sins? Who's healed all of your diseases? You remember that? Who? Who did that for you? Right? Who, who, who lifted you out of the pit last time? Who gave you a new position? Who crowned you with love and compassion? Who renewed your youth as the eagle? Who, who, who did all? Oh, God, that was you. Praise the Lord. I had to remind myself, praise the Lord. I mean, I can just see David. He's like, come on, so we're going to praise the Lord. Well, who saved you? Oh, the Lord did. Well, who healed you? Oh, the Lord did. Well, who lifted you out of the bed? Well, oh, oh, that was you too, God. Well, praise the Lord. Who crowned you with love and command? Oh, that was you too. Well, I'm just going to praise you then. I'm going to thank you then. I can't stop now because I'm remembering some things. I'm remembering what the God has done. Amen. But it starts as a choice. Amen? You know, in the Bible, people who couldn't speak, they're called mute. And Jesus had a particular ministry. He would go around and people who couldn't walk, people who couldn't see, people who couldn't hear, but also people who couldn't speak. He would heal them, and it says in, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 31 says, uh, the people were amazed when they saw the guy who couldn't speak, all of a sudden he's speaking. I wonder what he was saying. I bet you anything he was saying, well, praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Well, I'm 
sure he was practicing all over the place. He said, I haven't spoken in a long time. I never could speak, or I did before, but then I stopped. I don't know what happened to me, but something shut me up. And I got around Jesus, and all of a sudden, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, God has designed us. Every breath that we have is to praise the Lord. Jesus went around healing people who were shut down, oppressed, sad, Woe is me. I just can't say too much. It's so bad. Right? And the whole time, God's got a plan. Open up your mouth. Begin to praise him. Don't be silent anymore. You know, sometimes it's demonic. I felt this before. Jesus the next scripture, Matthew 9, Jesus healed a guy, but he had to drive out a spirit before the guy could talk. That tells me the devil doesn't want me to talk. Ha, 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 ha. The devil don't want you to talk. Talk about God. Talk about what Jesus has done in your life. Give your testimony. Tell people what's going on. The enemy wants you shut up, shut down, you know, oppressed, heavy laden, feeling lost, feeling like the whole world's against you. And, and, and the enemy doesn't want your mouth to open up because when you begin to praise, all of a sudden it changes the atmosphere. God's presence begins to come. And it begins to lift you up and you start getting strong. You start getting strong and then the enemy gets silent. Amen? People said, I've never seen anything like this before. I've never seen a guy that couldn't talk because of some demonic thing. I've never seen that. Right? But Jesus went around, and wherever he went around, tongues got unlocked. Lips got unlocked. People began to praise and worship and began to speak again. Amen? Second thing, are you getting anything out of this? All right. I know you guys all know this. I know you all know this, but maybe not this way. Second thing is this. You can't be silent anymore, but number two, we need to praise God at church with the new season band, with the Joe Hogue, the Marvin Matthews. We need to praise the Lord with the people that God has given to us, the tribe of Judah that goes before us, and they worship and they practice and they're good on their instruments and they got voices and they're not just making a joyful noise, they're, they're, making, a joyful, uh, 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 they're making a joyful sound, amen? Not a joyful noise. And, and, and so God's given us a, a great things in the church. But what's it like Monday through Saturday for you? Hmm? What's it like? What's it like? God wants us to praise him at church and at home. So Psalm 30 is interesting. If you look at the heading of Psalm 30, David wrote it. He wrote Psalm 30, right? And he wrote it to dedicate his house with. He wrote a song saying, devil, my God is so big, he wouldn't let you triumph over me. Devil, I'm exchanging my morning for dancing. Amen. And devil, you can't keep me silent. That's what David decided to sing. That's the song he wrote for Israel to dedicate his house. Why is that? Because most of what you're going to go through is right there in your own little tent. Monday through Saturday, right there in your house. Most of what you're going to go through is right there where you live most of the time. So David decided to dedicate his, his palace with a song talking about how God moved in his life and he almost died and the enemy almost took him out. But guess what? God showed up and turned his mourning into dancing so that he could praise the Lord and not be silent. What do you think David was doing in his home? Did he hang up his harp when he went home? 
Did he stop singing God's praises when he went home? Right? No. I want you to turn with me to Psalm 149, and we're going to kind of close with this. Psalm 149 starts off with, praise the Lord. Sing to the, uh, the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the saints. So right there, God's saying, hey, when you come to church, not if I go to church, but when you're in church, right? Because the Sabbath day is holy to the Lord. We sometimes forget it's one of the Ten Commandments, isn't it? Keep the Sabbath holy unto the Lord. We forget the things that God has instituted from the very beginning, right? And so God says, when you come to church, when you come with the people of God, when you're in the assembly, when you're with other believers, begin to praise the Lord, begin to worship the Lord all together. And it goes on in verses 2 through 4, and it says, hey, let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with the harp and tambourine. For God takes pleasure in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. So God's saying when we come to church, he's crowning you. He's, he's, he's doing something. He's bringing salvation. He's working in your life as you humble yourself to praise and to dance, and to get free in church, and, and to worship the Lord, and say, it doesn't matter what it looks like, it doesn't matter what it feels like, I'm going to lift holy hands to the Lord. I'm going to be like David and dance, like David dance. We begin to get beyond our self-consciousness. We come into the assembly, and when you got a whole bunch of people worshiping together, God begins to move corporately. So this psalm says you need to worship. You need to come in to the church. You need to come with the people of God. You need to gather like Angel said. You need to be with God's people, with your church, with your family. And you need to worship together because as you do, God's crowning you. And he's bringing salvation. He's turning things around in your life. What? You mean when I come to church and I, I, was, I was singing as Marvin was, was singing and, and, and you mean God was doing, yeah, in the spiritual realm, God was moving so that your circumstances begin to change. Yeah. All you had to do was come to church, obey the Ten Commandments, show up, make the Sabbath day holy, worship the Lord, sing a few songs, open up your mouth, not be silent, gather with God's people, and all of a sudden, God's crowning you, and God's bringing salvation to a situation in your life. Oh, well, pastor, if you would have told me that before, I would have come to church. I thought I was just coming here and looking at a bunch of people, looking at a crazy pastor, waiting for the sermon to end. No, God's moving. As you worship, as you praise, as you come together and obey his word, God's bringing salvation. God's crowning you. You got to humble yourself to worship. You got to humble yourself to praise him. You have to humble yourself to make a joyful noise, especially if you can't sing. You got to, you got to humble yourself to dance a little bit when you don't have a beat. You've got to humble yourself. Amen. But it doesn't end there. The song keeps going. Let's go to verse 5. We're talking about praising God in the assembly, going to church, worshiping God with all the saints. And then it goes and it switches and it says, go back to 5. It says, let them, let his saints rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. Oh, now I'm home. Where's your bed? My bed's at home. I hope your bed's at home. Some people think they have to bring their bed to church because the pastor preaches so long, but don't worry, just bring a sleeping bag. I'm in the assembly, and then all of a sudden I'm in my bed. What do you do when you're in your bed?
out of your laughing. God says, begin to worship. When you're lying in your bed, you just begin to thank the Lord. What is God saying? You praise him at home. You dedicate your home with praise. You allow your home to be a sanctuary that when people walk in, they don't feel division. They don't feel weirdness. They don't feel little demons hanging around in the kitchen. And you go back into the bedroom and, oh, I don't want to go there. And then you go in the bathroom, oh, don't want to go there either. You begin to praise God and worship God. All of a sudden, your, your home is a sanctuary. It's filled with the praises of God. You're even singing to God on your bed. You're worshiping the Lord all throughout the week. And and then you come to church on Sunday and you've got a lot of strength because you've been praising God Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I can't wait to get to church to praise Him in the assembly. I'm so strong in the Lord. Woo! Amen. I want to just end with this. I know I said that a few minutes ago, but it's the same psalm. (laughs) When I was young, my dad, in Uruguay, Montevideo, Uruguay, my dad bought three of us kids a guitar, each of us a handmade guitar, made out of piano wood, custom made, beautiful handmade classical guitar for three of us kids who wanted to learn how to play. And I used to spend hours in my bedroom while everybody else was off doing stuff. I was the weird kid. Because I would spend hours alone in my bedroom, on my bed. And I would take psalm after psalm after psalm. And I would sing each one of them. I only knew three chords. Maybe all all of them had the same melody. Maybe I'd jazz it up with a different little, you know, rhythm. But I sang to the Lord. And I would sing the psalms. And and I did that growing up. And I did it constantly. And and, and later got into worship bands. And later uh, uh, traveled in Youth with a Mission. And got to go to Amsterdam where I met my wife who was in a punk rock group. Uh, Don't explain that. But anyway. (laughs) All because of that little guitar. But you know what it taught me? When no one else is watching, when I was a weird kid growing up, missionary kid growing up all over Central and South America, moving constantly, just a strange little kid, I spent time worshiping the Lord. I spent time praising the Lord. I would spend hours singing songs to the Lord. And finally, my parents understood because they would walk into my room and they felt the presence of God. Do you know what? When I come to church, you know what I expect? I expect the presence of God because I've got the presence of God at home. I've got the presence of God with me. I expect the presence of God like a thousand times. Off the charts. Corporate anointing. But it starts at home. So all of a sudden we've gone from verse 5, and then there's verse 6, 7, 8. And, and, and this is, most of you know this. It says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Everybody said that. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And the two-edged sword in their hand. And, you know, I've always gone to verse 6 and 7 and 8 and 9, and I've linked it to verse 1, where this is happening in the assembly. But actually, we were just in your bedroom. We were just worshiping on your bed. We were, we were worshiping outside the assembly in verse 5. And all of a sudden, it says, let the high praises of God. 
Where are the high praises of God come from? I always read that and I always thought, God, that's when I get to church. That's when we're all clapping. That's when we're all ecstatic. That's when we all feel the glory come. That's when we're, 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 we're worshiping you and, and you begin to do something corporately. But I believe that the high praises of God is when you're at home and you're, 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 you're battling through some things. You begin to praise him. You begin to praise him. And guess what? It says you got high praises in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. And what's happening? Well, there's vengeance on the nations. The kings are all bound up. Some things are happening, right? It says executing a written judgment. Some of you, you haven't seen victory in an area of your life. Maybe you need to go home and begin to get some high praises of God going on in your mouth, which is like a two-edged sword in your hand. I looked up two-edged sword. You just saw that next slide. We'll end here. Two-edged, you know what it means in the Hebrew? It means mouth, mouth. When you speak God's praises... It's like a two-edged sword in your hand. What was David saying? He was a warrior and he was a worshiper. He understood that when he began to let the praises of God flow out of his mouth, it was as if he was on the battlefield with a double-edged sword and all the enemies all over were being brought down to their knees. How many of you ready to not let the enemy triumph? God doesn't want the enemy to triumph over your life. God wants you to recover all. God wants to see some, some turnings, mourning into dancing. God wants to see some things, but you've got to not be silent. And you need to let the praise of God be in the church and also be in your home. You need to open up your mouth and begin to praise him. You've got to make a decision. You've got to make a choice. You've got to, regardless of how you feel, you need to step out. And when you step out, then God will begin to move in your life. Amen? Amen. Did you get this message? Yes. Did you get this word? Yes. Amen? I think I finally came to the end. I think I finally came to the end of all that the Lord was saying. Yep, looks like that was it. Thank you, Lord. So I have some homework for you. It's called the 555. Because some of you, you've been silent. Some of you have been silent way too long. Well, I don't know. I kind of I praise when I get to church. Well, what are you doing the other six days? The rocks are crying out in your yard. So here's something I want to give you, a 555. How many of you can take 15 minutes every day? Can you give God 15 minutes? I want you to try this. Five minutes, I want you to put on a praise song. You all got your phones in your hand. You can come up with your best praise list. One song is about five minutes nowadays, right? So get your best praise and song and play it first thing. Okay? Praise the Lord. Begin to make a decision like David. Say, I'm going to praise the Lord, soul. I'm going to get it going here today. I'm going to, I'm going to break out of where I'm at. I'm going to see some triumph going on, right? Second thing is take, take five minutes and read the Bible. And what I want you to do is read a psalm. I used to sing through all the psalms. Read a psalm every day. That takes you about five minutes. Third thing is, then talk to God about what's going on in your life. That's called the 555 program. That means you're not silent anymore. It means you're praising. It means you're opening yourself up to hear from God. And then you can respond back and begin to talk to God. Amen? How many of you think you can do that? Give God 555. All right? Okay, I want you to rise as you're able. Pastor has finally come to the end. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I believe that um, I believe that this is so serious that your life depends on it. 
your calling, your faith, seeing victory in your life, moving out of where you're at, shifting into from mourning to dancing. It doesn't just happen overnight. You saw the psalm. David had to go. He had to, he had to go through some things. He said, I can't be silent anymore. I, I have to begin to praise the Lord. So this, this service, we're going to end with a song, but I want to just pray and ask the Lord corporately for God to, to move in each one of our lives. With every head bowed today, this is between you and God. How many of you would say, Pastor Sandy, that word was for me. I know that I've been silent. It's been hard. It's been hard to, to praise. It's been hard to, to have a quiet time. It's been hard to hear from God. It's been hard to enter into his presence. I remember the days gone by. Something's changed in my life. And if you're in that place today, just make a commitment to the Lord. This is your day to make a commitment to the Lord. I want to pray for, for you, for those of you that raised your hands especially. Heavenly Father, you saw every hand that was raised. You know every situation. You know every heart. Today, God, we make a commitment to not be silent. We, we make a commitment in this church to not be silent. We make a commitment at home to not be silent. Lord, we want to praise you. We want to thank you. We want to remember all your benefits. We want to see you working in our lives. We want to see the avenger silenced and our enemies destroyed. And so God, today, we make a commitment to not be silent anymore. We make a commitment to thank you, to praise you, to step out. Lord, just forgive us for our silence. Forgive us for days and weeks where we've been focusing on everything else and not focusing on you. Lord, we come before you. We make that commitment today, Lord. We thank you. And then just for the body online and here in this place, I want to I want to just take authority over the enemy. In Jesus' name, we declare our mouths are open, our lips are filled with the praises of God. We take authority over every oppressing spirit, silencing spirit, anything that would cause us to shut up and to be silent. And God, we pray that you would lift those burdens and lift those things off of your people. And we ask God that you would move in each one of us in a powerful way. But we take authority over the enemy right now. We take authority over darkness and depression and oppression and repression and that silencer must go in Jesus' name. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to praise you, the opportunity to love you, the opportunity, God, to tell you how much you've done in our lives. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for that opportunity, God, for the honor. We thank you for the breath you've given to us. We thank you, Lord, that we can speak words in our heavenly prayer language and we can speak words in our own language and we can begin to worship you that the high praises of God can flow out of these lips. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that honor. Give you the glory and the praise. How many of you would say this morning, I felt something lift over my life felt something lift over my life, yeah.